Shall we rise up this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Today, I am going to be sharing with you will power. Everybody say that. Say that confidently. Father, we thank you this morning. Hey, there is nothing that can be done out here without your permission. Daddy, listen to me. I can only open my tongue here because you gave me the audacity to do so. Your people are very precious to you. They are very dear to you. The soul of human being, you do not toy with. And so, it is so vital for me to remind you that you need to speak today again to take care of your children. And not excluding me, because it's very important that you will come, speak, Bless me as you bless your children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, please, I hand over this whole thing to you. Let every lines of my lips not contradict your word. Thank you, Father. And I have you take control of this message. And this message will proceed to the ultimate part of the entire world ministering fire ministering deliverance ministering healing ministering liberty for a self on his world and he heals and deliver from destruction thank you father today in jesus name we have all declared can we put our hand together for our god god is good Have your seat. I have no part with Satan. When Satan knows, when it comes to me by God's grace, he knows that he needs to pay respect to God. Because I myself, number one, thing that I know about myself, I'm a timid person. I was once a timid person. Naturally, I am not a kind of a person who wants to be looking at people's faces. I'm a timid person. When I was a very small, young child, I couldn't even eat in the public. So that's how timid I was. So if I'm standing before you today and I'm speaking confidently, it's because of something. It's something called fire. That's the reason I'm speaking here. So you, you, we, we want to be sure that uh, we are here not to play. We are here to receive from God. Because all these things can only come from God, not from man. So, uh, the question of me being in this whole situation, it doesn't apply. So, get ready to receive from God today. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive? All right. Open your mind. Open your heart. Because God is, again, about to blow your mind. Hallelujah. Blow your mind. Okay. Willpower. Everybody say willpower. Willpower. Everybody say willpower. Now, where do I get this from? Okay, where do I get this word willpower from? It's the Bible verses I just read in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12, verses 12 and 13. It says, But as many as received him, to them he gave he power. Okay? He gave he power. Now go ahead. Let's keep, let's keep reading that particular verse. And to become the sons of God. So you have power given to you to become sons of God. 
Even to them that believe on his name, then verse 13, which are born not of, of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. So that means the flesh has a will. That means the flesh is a personality. Okay. Nor of the will of man. Okay. That means a man has a will. Okay. All right. As a will of a man. Of course, as a man, you are a personality. Then, but of the will of God. That means also God is a personality. God has a will. So, therefore, we have three types of will. Everybody say, we have three types of will. The will of the flesh, the will of man, <laughs> and the will of God. Why are we talking about this today? It's because I need to open up your mind. Or because there are a lot of deception out there. All manners of gospel, all manner of messages, all manners of lies that are coming out of the mouth of men, confusing Christianity to be a simple common sense gospel. And today, as the Holy Ghost will allow me, we are going to separate the gospel from that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, there is a gospel that has to do with the will of man. There is a gospel that enriches itself in the will of the flesh. And there is a gospel that we are given, which is from the will of God. We are told that the prophet prophesied as they are given by the auction as they are given utterance by the will of the Holy Spirit. In other words, by the will of God. So, the gospel is not of the will of man, nor of the will of the flesh, but of the will of God. Now, the question you'll be asking me is, okay, now, why then are we having the issue of the will of flesh? How does it come to play? and the will of man, how does it come to play? Let me start with you here. The will of man. Let's start with that. God gives a man free will. Another way around, the will of a man is free. Everybody say the will of man is free. What is the meaning of free will? What is the meaning of free will? That means that when a will is free, that will can decide, can make a choice of his own. All right. And God did that, gave a man free will simply because of his love. Okay? We are created in the image of God. And so, whoever God wants to be by his side, he wants the person to be able to be free. So, God wants that all right, you are going to decide to do my witches by your decision, right? Not by my compelling. God has the right to compel every individual to force anyone to do what he witches, but he wouldn't do so when he created created Adam and Eve. He let that will to be free. To God give a man free will to make a man, to make a choice to do whatever he chooses to do with the hope that the man will choose his witches without having to pressurize or force the man with his sovereignty. So actually, nobody can survive. We can't be persons. We can't be of personality without a will. Nobody can survive not having. A will. The will of a man helps him to do things expected of him as human without having to shift responsibility to God. 
and at the same time without being independent of god okay let me get that clear the will of a man enables a man to make choices in life and do things as normal human being without having to be overly shifting responsibility of ease like going to the toilet to do whatever you want to do there putting on clothes taking your bath do the right thing so the will god gives to a man give a man that privilege to do things without having to be overly shifting his own personal responsibility to god and at the same time without being independent of god does that make sense to you <laughs> okay let me reverse that again without being independent of god say you don't overly shift all your responsibility to god but at the same time without being independent of god that means you are dependent on god but at the same time you still have the responsibility to do what you ought to do are you getting me right now okay so god giving us a free way is his attitude of love and commitment to friendship between a man and god okay so under this free will listen carefully we can build we can create we can make things happen whatever we want to do on the surface of the earth as human within the limits allowed by god himself let me let me let me rewind that again because it's so important to understand that under the free will we are given we can decide to be the best student in this campus god has given us the right to study hard and be great god has given us the right to create things god has given us the right to build without having to wait unnecessarily having god to take charge there are some things that god has given you free will to do as long as those things that you are doing is not it's within the limit allowed by god now let me clear that out <laughs> let me clear that out genesis chapter 11 verse 3 to 8 genesis chapter 11 verse 3 to 8 there are some men i mean the old men in the world the old people at that time they were speaking one language and they make a decision let me just read it then they said to one another come let us make bricks these are the men speaking the same language they cooperate together by their will they just make a decision make brick and bake them thoroughly they had brick for stone they had asphalt for mortar verse 4 and they said come let us build ourselves a city a tower whose top is in the heavens watch this let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth verse 5 but the lord came down what did he come to do to see the city they built and the tower which the sons of men had built verse 6 and the lord said indeed the people are one and they all have one language and this is what they begin to do now nothing listen carefully now nothing now nothing everybody say now nothing see what the will of man can do those are the gospel you'll be hearing they will tell you look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself about tomorrow and then you see that it's working for them it's under this canopy i <laughs> And Abalis will go gather leaves and put it together and create a door and create an idol for himself and begin to chant. Demon come upon it and things begin to happen. This under this canopy. 
under this canopy we have idolatry under this canopy a man by the power of his own will can do some stuff see you need to understand this today because the lord has me to speak that to you you need to be able to differentiate things and get clarity when it comes to the gospel you'll be hearing messages here and there you won't believe in the household of faith metaphysical gospel preaching gospel of common sense and tell you this canopy that the entire gospel we are preaching is under this canopy see the action of god in this area here there are all things we can do in life but not all things are acceptable by god god can leave us to do anything but let me tell you on that the level that he has permitted any other thing we do not under the level is permitted is a rebellion against god the will is free but the will is not free the will is free on that the limit allowed by god now we are in time of grace when those things were happening in the old testament god will always come with judgment but in the time of grace when people gather together and build this kind of a thing you know what god won't talk because it's time of grace god is going to wait till the day of judgment hallelujah because we're in time of grace you dare do some stuff in the old testament some people will be stoned like committing adultery do all stuff they will stone you it's instant judgment but in the new testament because God now gives grace does not mean God has now given a man to do whatever he likes. Now, there's a caution here. Say, now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Can you imagine that? That is how strong the will of a man is. And I keep educating people around me. I say, hey, my friend, you not prospering depends on you okay if you don't work hard you are going to remain poor there are some things <laughs> god can bless because these things have been operated under the limit that is allowed if you as a human being it has been said the hand that work hard the hand that so will it be the reward. If God has said he ate laziness, if God has said there is time for sowing, as I'm for reaping, then that means that if we decide in our own way not to sow, there is no amount of prayers. If our will is weak, is if our will is disabled, if our will is lazy. To do what he ought to do something terrible will happen poverty will come over the person religiosity can't solve that problem <laughs> religiosity cannot solve the problem of laziness the reward of laziness is poverty it's always going to be poverty god has set the example and he's give you free we say go to the garden he created either man if say go to the garden and walk it Everybody say, walk it. That's the command he gave to them. He allowed their free will to walk in the garden. And God will not visit them until in the evening. Because he knows that human are busy all through the day working hard. <laughs> he visit them only in the evening. <laughs> Hallelujah. Willpower! He said, nothing will be waited for them. Verse 7. Come, let us go down. And there, confuse their language. That they may not understand one another's 
speech. Verse 8. So the Lord scattered them abroad. And they are over the face of the whole earth. And they ceased building the city. See that? So you have the power to make money. You have the way to make money. Free way to make money. But you cannot translate making money to be the gospel. Are you listening to me? Anybody can make money. <laughs> Are you listening to me right now? If, we, if somebody preaches the gospel to you and say, because you believe Christ, that's why you are rich. That riches means believing in Christ. That is a lie. Okay, just got to get it clear. Good things are happening to you all the time because you work so hard. That is the gospel. No. That's not the gospel. When you sow, you go to reap. That's a natural law. It's not because of the gospel. So the gospel must not be centered on that. As a common sense gospel. The gospel that merely emphasizes what you, it is normal for human beings to do. Why should that be a gospel? The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Because we are born as human beings to do the will of God. Not just do it, you do our will. And one thing that a man enjoys is for you to tell him what you want to hear. A natural man ordinarily enjoys you talking about what you want to hear. A natural man enjoys you celebrating what he did by his will. He will come close to you because you are celebrating what he does by his own will. If our gospel is to gather people and tell them what they want to hear, what their will can do, then we have crucified Christ the second time. Every human being is indebted to make his will work. If you sow, you will reap. If you work out, you're going to make it again. That's not the gospel. However advantageous the free will God gives to man is the word of God. The gospel never came by the will of man. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 21. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 21. I'm saying all this thing because all of you are about to start a self-fellowship. You need to get clarity about this vision. So that you don't Go there and begin to talk your thing. <laughs> we'll talk about the will of God. Not the will of the flesh. Not the will of man. That you are happy, you are enjoying your life, doesn't mean you are a Christian. Anybody can be happy and enjoy life because they work hard. But not everybody's entitled to joy. Happiness is temporary. You can fetch yourself that by hard work with your free will. But joy, you can give yourself because joy is the fruit of the Spirit of God. It comes by doing God's will. You can be, you can, you can be happy and still be depressed. When joy comes into you, you can't have joy and be depressed. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying right now? So the gospel is not about happiness. <laughs> it's about the joy of the Lord. It's my strength. The woman was in trouble, but yet they said the joy of the Lord is what? My strength. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because the Lord is with me. I am joyful even in the, in, in the lake of fire. The lake of fire was born I was not born because of the joy of God that sustained me in that fire. A two different things from happiness. Now, second thing, the will of the flesh. Everybody say, the will of the flesh. How does the will of the flesh come around? How does it come? How does it come, come into man? God created a will for a man to be free. But how does the will of the flesh come around? Okay? Does it come around? The will of the flesh does not please God. That's one of the properties of the will of the flesh. It does not please God. Does not please God. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. The will of the flesh 
is not supposed to be part of us ordinarily. The will of the flesh is of the devil. Because devil has been cast out of God's presence. It, 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 the opposite of spiritual God. The spiritual God is the Satan is what Satan carry. The opposite of the spiritual God is the flesh. All right. So whatever thing that are called the attributes of Satan come from the will of the flesh. Now how was this will of the flesh really, really was shown into man? Why is it that the will of the flesh cannot please God? Because the will of the flesh is to lust against the witches of God. And lost against it. And we are told in the scripture that the devil just rises and says, I want to raise my, my leadership above God. And he gathers some angel to himself. And God saw the perception and he threw him away. It's exactly opposite to God's intention, the will of the flesh. Now we are suffering for it today. And now you will become a victim. Here we go. Hallelujah. Galatians 5, verse 17, 8. Galatians 5, verse 17, they say, For the flesh lost against the spirit. Lost against what? The spirit. So, the will of the flesh is the exact opposite of the will of God. The will, how do we get contaminated with that? The will of the flesh. Because in the Garden of Eden, the devil brought this corrupt will, corrupt seed. And what he did do is sow a seed of conversation. Amen. Okay. And this, in the conversation, because a man has a free will to make a choice to decide what he wants to do without being forced by God. And the conversation was going on. Adam and Eve find it the need to listen. That's the first thing that they do wrong, is to will to listen. Amen. To listen to the wrong thing. They give themselves up to do whatever they like. And they listen to strangers. Amen. And when the stranger engaged them in conversation, and when the conversation was going on, of course we see in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 2 to 5. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, verse 3, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Lest you die. Verse 4. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Is that opposite of the will of God? He said, you will not surely die. They entertain stranger. Engage in conversation with a stranger. Now let me tell you today, what you hear matters to your life. Matters what you hear from strangers. And because a they allowed that to happen, guess what happened? These Adam and Eve, they went against the will of God by listening to what the devil tells them. And that seed of the flesh was sown into them right there. They, as, as soon as they disobeyed God, that seed of flesh was sown into them. Hallelujah. Now, when we become born again, guess what happens? God redeemed our spirit from corruption. But he did not redeem the consequence of that disobedience. Because for every sin to God committed, <laughs> that only grace or only judgment, in the Old Testament or New Testament, there must be punishment. What do I say? For every sin committed, either forgiving or not forgiving, there will be a consequence. And the consequence God allowed to stay with a man is that a man's life will be limited. God created human beings to live forever. Are you listening to me? To live forever for his praise, to be in the garden and represent his praise and glory. But I think that that sin... As soon, as soon as that seed of the flesh was sown, the sin was committed of disobedience. What happens? God brought a redeemer, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, shed his blood for us. 
And we say we are transformed because of the spirit of God that comes into us. Say, be born again of the water and of this what? Of the spirit. So the spirit of God takes over our spirit, baptizes our spirit, and we become born again. As I will be born of water and of the spirit, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. So we are born of the spirit, we're being converted. Our spirit being converted. But our flesh, the flesh that gets into us, corrupted our body system. So our body system is no longer qualified to inherit, have an inheritance with God. Are you listening to me? So the only thing that has an inheritance with God is the spirit of man. Hallelujah. Now, that's why we are told in the scripture, when Christ comes, he said the corruptible will be removed. The corruptible that will be removed is the seed of flesh, the will of the flesh that is in our temple, whose center of dwelling is our head. We will be completely removed. Our central nervous system has been corrupted. <laughs> we will be removed. And then a new body will be given to us. That new body is what will make us live forever. But the body we carry right now is as a result of the consequences of allowing ourselves to let the devil sow the seed of the will of the flesh into us. Are you following me? When you are preaching your gospel in your cells, in your cell house fellowship, you must understand where this ministry is from. Right? You must understand that every message we preach here in this fellowship is based on these things. Very based on these things. Now he said, John chapter, 1 John chapter 3 verse 9. He said, whoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him. What is that seed? The seed of the Holy Spirit. That's what is in him. So God sow a seed of his spirit by our spirit being baptized of the Holy Spirit. And so that's the one that will enable us to do what is right. Whereas the will of the flesh we have to be contested. And, it's, and the Apostle Paul said in the book of Galatians that these two are contrary to each other. He said the, the, the flesh and what? And the spirit of God inside you, they're conflicting. So that you will not do what you please. You will not do what you please. Right? What, what is making you not to do what you please? The spirit of God in you won't let you do what you want to do freely anyhow. It will want to help you to empower you to do the will of God. Because the reason why we are created, we are created to freely choose within the ramification God allowed. So we are actually created to do things to follow the will of God. We are not created to, to do things outside the will of God. Now, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says, he said, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. What seed is he talking about? The corruptible seed is the will of the flesh. Okay. You see, remember what I told you here, if you look at the verse I read. He said, but as many receive him, to help them give power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of the blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of the flesh, not the will of the man, but of the will of God. So, so it means that you are born of a seed that is not corruptible. And the seed that is not corruptible, that for which you are born, is the will of God, who is the Holy Spirit himself. In the beginning was the world, the world was the God, the world is God. He put on flesh and dwelt in our midst. The Spirit of God is Jesus. And Jesus is the will of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the corruptible seed that we carry around is the will of the flesh. And this is the way somebody can be born. Somebody can be born of flesh, of the will of man. 
not the will of God. There's some people don't believe in anything, but they just believe in themselves. And it's working for them. And God kept quiet. And because God kept quiet, they think, oh, that's religion. Let's do that as religion. Self-angradizing. Self-religion. They just believe themselves. That they can do anything. And God allowed them to keep doing it. And they made, them a go- and made that a gospel for themselves. And as another gospel, who is always advocating steadily the will of the flesh without the people even knowing that they're actually serving the flesh. Because in, in the midst of those people gathering, there is no mentioning of the Holy Spirit in their midst. There is no time where the word of God is taken out and broken in pieces. The word of God is not being interpreted by the hot trance the Holy Ghost gives. It's just to feed the people to make them hear what they want to hear. They are actually being born of the flesh. Yet, they call their name preachers of the gospel. Now, 1 John chapter 3 verse 9 again. Says, Whoever is born of God does not commit sin. For the seed remains in him. The seed of the Holy Spirit is in him. He doesn't have the ability. Can means able to. The meaning of C-A-N. Can is able to. So when one is born of the Holy Spirit, you are not able to. When you say able to, it means you have a skill in being able to do things. Skill. You are the adept to do things. So whoever is born of the Holy Spirit does not have the adept to keep sinning. It doesn't have the skill to craft evil against people. Because the Holy Ghost will tell him. He will sit down. He will cry. He will call upon God if he makes a mistake. A mistake. But whoever is born of the flesh freelance does whatever he likes. Do evil will become pathological. Doing evil become easy. Become pathological. If somebody is a pathological liar, pathological evil character, that person is being used to it and the conscience doesn't beat. <laughs> right? That's what we call a sinner. Amen. A sinner go and fornicate and does whatever he likes. He doesn't mind doing whatever he wants to do. And it's free. No guilty conscience. Because the conscience is sad with hot iron. Now, what we open our ears to hear matters. Now, the, now we, we are told to flee corrupt communication. We say, no, no, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So whatever we are hearing, Remember, we still carry the flesh. Right? The flesh is sitting down here. So mind what you hear. Everybody say, mind what you hear. If you stand in a place where all that they talk about is the ability of a man to do things, to be happy, you know you are in the wrong place. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord asked me to tell you, it's all about him. All about him. All about him. Last time I said, all about him. Say that again. Not about you. Sit down. Not about your hair girl. Not about your will to do whatever you like to be happy. It's about the will of God. In the last prayer, he said that we be done on earth as it is in heaven. The will of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come. The kingdom come. The kingdom come. The kingdom come. The will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's more than limitation of the needs that we have on the surface of the earth. What they do in heaven is not what they do here on earth. So we need to carry ourselves away from the world and break
bring heaven down to the surface of the earth. That's what he's saying. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is about the will of God. It's not about what we think. It's not about redressing ourselves. It's not about making ourselves comfortable. You can gather millions of people, but if the center of the gospel is to get human beings to start feeling better about themselves, about feeling good about the will of themselves that they are doing or the will of the flesh that they are doing beyond God's level of permission. You know that that particular, particular gathering is not of God. It's not of God. Lastly, the will of God. God expected that our will as human should be put in consonance with his, with ease without having to force us to do so. Okay? We want our free will to be put in consonance. Our, free, our will is free, but it has to be in consonance with the will of God, the level that God permits. God is not going to make you a dumb person I say, because you are converted, I have become your God, now you become dumb, you can't do anything. No, you should be able to do things, right? But the things you do will not go beyond the limitation, the limit that he allows. And let me guarantee you, those limitations he, he, he allowed, that limit that he allowed is what actually gives us freedom. Some people are free, but they're not really free because they are doing things right far away from the freedom God gave to them. They are acting against our freedom. They are doing things against the level God permits. And so therefore they become sorrow for them. They are sowing seed to their life. Seed of sorrow. So we have been created to do God's will. The overall essence of God giving us free will is just for us to willingly decide to choose what he wants us to do. Simple. <laughs> Without forcing us to do it. Doesn't mean that God gave us a free will to hurt against him. No! He could have forced the will, his will on us in the, right from the beginning. I say, okay, everybody, be robots. Do whatever, you know. But he doesn't do that. But we took advantage of that and say, okay, well, since he doesn't do that, then we can do whatever we like then, even against what he wants. No, that's not the purpose of God giving us free will. The free will God gives to us is for us to be his glory, his praise, establish his truth on the surface of the earth. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 8 to 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 8 to 10. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offering, and offering of for sin you did not desire, nor pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Verse 9. Then he said, behold, I have come to you to do your will, O God. That is Jesus Christ. It takes away the first Old Testament and it may establish the second one that we have today in time of grace. But that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So we are created to do the will of God. And that's what Jesus Christ did in the book of John chapter 5 verse 30. He said, thy will be done. See, he said, whatever I do, I receive from God. Okay, I've given my will to you. Hallelujah. So the purpose, God, Jesus Christ established that. He handed over his will to God. Because the reason why you created this whole thing, this whole humanity, is because we do your will. Simple. What are the will of God? Number one, the law of God written in our hearts by the Holy Spirit help us to do what which is which is the, which is pleasing unto God and that is clearly emphasized in the book of Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 to 27 rather Ezekiel 36 25 to 27 say 
then i will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean i will cleanse you from all your fittiness and from all your idols i will give you a new heart i put a new spirit within you i will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh i will put the spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status and you will keep my judgment and to them the secret of holiness prophesied in ezekiel the only reason why we are able to do the will of god as a man is because we've been converted as a christian been born again as a christian no natural man can do the will of god in the flesh we cannot please god flesh cannot what please god the will of god cannot please god the will of man can only please god because the will of man has been empowered by the baptism of the holy spirit or on the on the spirit of the man and the law as a result of baptism the law is written by the holy spirit in the mind of the heart of the man the mind of the heart of human being the mind of the heart of human being is called the will of human being the mind of the heart of human being is called the will of a man that free will so it's related as a law written there so the man has a choice to still be taking auction to be taking advice from the flesh you have option but right now you also have the spirit of god right there in your heart now there's a conflict which paul apostle paul clarified there's a conflict in between the spirit of god in you and the flesh that reside in your body your brain your head now because you've been empowered the holy ghost you have more tendencies to do the will of god what do I say? Now the choice is you to now choose to keep following God. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. Say, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. So we live according to the will of the flesh, we are going to die. Death is not only going to be a way we'll die physically, we we'll die spiritually. We will be dead. We can be rich, have money, have houses, but we are dead, not alive. Suffering, pain, <laughs> worries. If you see people that are really dead, you know they are rich, but they are really dead. There are so many of them. You kind of wonder, say, what is going on with this person? It's rich, has a lot of things. What's going on? But me here, I'm satisfied and pleased. Have peace in my heart. Dead. It's very obvious. When somebody is dead, you will know that this person is dead. As on your feet. But if by the spirit you put to death the deed of the body, you will live. Now, look at one thing here. Pay attention. He said, if by the Spirit, <laughs> open your mind, you put to death the deeds of the body. So the deeds of the flesh can only be subdued by the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me here? Okay. If by the Spirit, not if by yourself or by your will, if by the spirit so holiness comes by the spirit of god anyone who tells you that the holy ghost doesn't make holy has just lied he has zoned your ability to be holy to your own free will that is not true the will of the man cannot be holy the will of the man can be holy because the will of the holy ghost has taken over and that depends on the amount of submission you submit to the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Ghost, as we are told in the book of Ezekiel, will begin to write the law of God in your heart. When you read the Bible, it interprets for you. It will tell you what to do next. And you begin to take action. So therefore, is the reason, because you carry the Holy Ghost, and you are doing the will of God at all times, that is why as, as many that are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons, the daughters of God. 
close your eyes and begin to pray father i receive your leadership today i resist the will of the flesh sitting down in my body i give myself to the leadership of the holy spirit give myself away <laughs> Give myself away so you can lead me. Give myself away. Oh, 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 oh. give myself away so you can lead me. Give myself away. But say that. To God. Today I'm giving myself to you. Hallelujah. I need your leadership. I need you to lead me aright. <laughs> In the precious name of Jesus Christ. I need to live a life that is pleasing unto you. I need to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have a clear. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done today. We give you all the praise for releasing your word today and giving us the way to go. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Have your seat. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The does not condemn. Back in the power of God. God loves with you. The end of the, the world. Lord talk to our past.